All right. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Core Stability. We're super excited to have you here today. Um, we're going to be starting with a standing warm up, then we're going to go into standing core, then we're going to kind of be on our hands and knees for some uh, a lateral core, I guess we'll call it that. <laughs> Then we're going to go down to on our backs doing some like butterfly kicks and scissor kicks. And then we're going to end with glute bridges. And so today's going to just really be a progression of exercises, uh, me explaining as we go and kind of molding into each um, progression of exercise. But to start, uh, as always, if you need to take breaks, please do so. Uh, we're going to just start with just walking in place. And I kind of time things on my watch, um, but just kind of walking in place. I also like to just like shake out my limbs a little bit. I was a little stiff today. So uh, I realized that I need this workout more than probably most because uh, my spine is definitely like stiff from sitting. So as you're just walking in place, you can just kind of march around. I'm just kind of like moving my arms to kind of like marching or just shaking them out and really just waking up our body just so that we can kind of get the blood flowing for our movement today. <laughs> And as always, as we're just walking in place, I want to just talk about engaging our core. Since this is core stability, it's a big piece of making sure that our core is always engaged. So sometimes what that means is uh, when our core is not engaged, it's like our belly's out and there's a C in our back. So it's almost like our belly is like pushing out and then our butt is pushing back, which creates like a C curve in our spine. That's not an engaged core. An engaged core means that my pelvis is slightly tilted forward, almost like I'm tucking in my belly button. And some people like to say there's an imaginary string from my belly button to my spine. So if you want to just feel that difference, push your belly out and your butt out, and then slowly tuck your pelvis in, just like you're tucking it underneath your hips. And that's an engaged core. And right now you're just gonna practice breathing with that engaged core in through your nose, out through your mouth. And it's a great way too of just your walking every day is just noticing your posture. So along with our posture, we wanna have our core engaged. So throughout all the exercises, you're gonna hear me keep saying, keep your core engaged. And that will really change how you're doing the exercises. And last but not least today, it's not about how fast we do them, it's about how well we do them. So slower movements, but making sure our core is engaged and we're elongating those movements as I'm coaching us through. Um, does anyone have any questions? All right, we're gonna just put our feet um, a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, and we're just gonna get wake up that spine. So you can put your hands uh, on your hips. And the first thing we're doing is just torso twists. So we're just going to take our, um, we're just going to twist all the way, our feet firmly planted, knees slightly bent, and we're just going to twist our shoulders uh, to the left or right as far back as you can go, and then come back to center, and then you can twist the other way. And I see Heidi also, she has her hands up, that's a great way to do it, so you can have your hands up as like goal posts, and you're just twisting, oh my back just cracked, <laughs> and again we're just waking up the spine, nice and slow making sure your core is engaged. Again, just getting the blood flowing. Our spine is our, uh, they call it like the brain center, right? When that's working well, everything is gonna work well because there's like thousands of neurons in it. So just twisting, great. Do about two more each side, making sure you're breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. Good, all right, go ahead and shake it out. All right, feet firmly planted on the floor again, knees slightly bent. We're gonna bring our hands up over our head and we're just gonna hold them there for a second. And we're gonna reach our fingertips as far as we can to the sky. And then I want you to imagine that there's someone tugging on your tailbone and kind of just try to drop your tailbone down to the ground, not like far, just kind of let it hang while your fingertips reach. And so that's just stretching our spine out. Almost like if someone was pulling your hands and pulling your feet, you're, you're letting that spine stretch out. And just breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Good. And now slowly on this next exhale, we're gonna do go into a forward fold. So inhale, and as you exhale, reach your fingertips out away from your body, slowly coming down to touch your toes. Now, if you can't touch your toes, that's fine. 
you just want to really nice and slow and you're going to hang there. So don't come up. So just really trying to touch your toes, let your head hang, let your arms hang. You can draw little figure eights with your hands. You can shake your head. Yes. You can shake your head. No. And just kind of wiggle. I like to wiggle my hips too, because sometimes my hamstrings are really tight. So I just kind of like shift my weight back, almost like I'm wagging my tail <laughs> on the way back. The things we say on our YouTube channel. <laughs> and then you're going to breathe in. And as you exhale, just slowly come back up so we don't have all the, the blood rush to our head. Can you guys hear me okay? This microphone was flopping. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so with our hands on our hips and our feet shoulder width apart, we're gonna just do some hip rotations. So we're gonna just draw some really big circles with our hip. You can pick any way. And so you're gonna literally push your butt back, drawing a really big circle, almost like you're hula hooping. And then you're gonna push your hips forward as you lean back, nice and slow. Making sure your core is engaged, it's kind of hard to do, but really just being mindful of those movements. We're just, again, getting those hips working because we are gonna be using them. And go about one more time and then you're gonna switch directions. Wait, which way was I going? Oh, this way. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I know, I was like, I don't remember which way. This is a great thing. And this is actually, what we're doing is a great, it's, they call it like a, not a miracle morning, but it's a great way to start your day just to get your spine moving. I do this sometimes on my own. That's where, and my spine was like sore today. So I was like, all right, we're going to open up with this. Now <laughs> you're just going to just do figure eights. So figure eights with your hips. And so just try to draw eights with your hips and just go one way. And then we're going to go the other way in just, just a moment. So just draw on those hips, keep your knees slightly bent. Make sure you're not hyperextending them. Good. All right, and go ahead and go the other way. Just realized that the camera is super zoomed in on me, so I should probably fix that. <laughs> Good. All right. So before we move into our exercise, we're just gonna do a couple sumo squats. So put your feet wider than shoulder width apart. You're gonna point your toes out away from your body. And when, you, when you're gonna engage your core, I like to keep my hands on my hips or just out in front like I'm praying, like with like praying mantis hands. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit back. And as you sit back, you're gonna hold it for a second and you're gonna push through your heels when you come up and then just squeeze your glutes at the top. So these are sumo squats. They're really, they're a lot easier on the knees because they help us to stay balanced and they're not so narrow. So it's a nice little thing. And you're just gonna do 10 of them. So just do 10 little squats, just kind of engaging those, those glutes and those hamstrings, all muscles we're gonna use today, just so we can kind of have a nice dynamic warm up. When you do 10, you can just shake it out and walk in place. I'm gonna just take a sip of water. You're welcome to too. All right, so our first uh, standing core, what we're gonna do is something called a good morning. And so your feet are going to be uh, shoulder width apart. What you're gonna do is place your hands on the small of your back. And so you can clasp them, you can just rest them on like your sits bones. Either way, you just want them to be behind your back. You're going to engage your core, so tuck that pelvis in to make sure that you don't have a C curve in your back. And what we're gonna do is have our knees slightly bent and we're just going to lower our shoulders and our nose towards the ground. And we're gonna stop at hip height. So we're gonna stop at hip height and then we're gonna just gonna slowly come back up, making sure your core is engaged the whole time. So this is like a standing crunch, but what it's doing is simultaneously stretching our hamstrings, building our glutes, and then also engaging our core. So this is the good morning and we're gonna just, uh, that's the first exercise. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay. 
The next one is your feet are gonna be exactly the same. And these are going to be a single leg deadlift. So these can be a little challenging. Um, so if you need to put a hand on a wall or something next to you, that's fine. Um, but what you're gonna do is be lifting one leg behind you as your torso goes forward. So I'm gonna start with my right leg and I'm gonna lift my right leg up off the ground back behind me while I'm balancing on my left leg. And as I do that, my chest comes forward to about hip height and then I'm just gonna hold it. I'm gonna squeeze my glutes and then come back down. So this is a single leg deadlift. Um, and what's really important again is keeping your core engaged that whole time. And as my leg comes up, my pelvis is still engaged. I come down, my chest is level with my hip, my leg is up, I squeeze my glutes and then I come back to standing. Does anyone have any questions? We're gonna do that on both sides. So again, take your time. And if you need something to balance on, feel free to just lightly put your hand on a wall or a chair. So those are our single leg deadlifts. And those are just the, the three kind of exercises we're gonna do standing. Um, so if you guys are ready, we're gonna just rotate through for 30 seconds. The music was really slowing my computer, so you get to hear my voice the whole time. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to have a good workout. So we're gonna start with those good mornings. Feet are shoulder width apart. Engage that core, and we're gonna go for 30 seconds with good mornings. And so go ahead and start lowering my chest to the ground, engaging that core, coming back up, squeeze those glutes. Today is a theme of squeeze, squeezing our glutes. And just slowly, just saying good morning. It's almost like you're bowing, but just making sure that your core is engaged that whole time. We have 15 seconds left. And then we're gonna go to those single leg deadlifts. Now I'm gonna do 30 seconds for each leg, but if for some reason you, you, I don't know, say you think you get like eight on one and like six on the other, feel free to just do it so that they're even, so you can count if you like. All right, and five, four, three, two, one. All right, write yourself, engage that core. You're going to lift one of your legs, whichever one you like. Oh, I just got off balance. Squeeze your glutes. My core is engaged. Hold it, squeeze for one, then come back and stand up. I'm gonna alternate each time. It's up to you if you want to just do one leg at a time. For me, it keeps my balance. <laughs> Either way, we're gonna do this for a full minute. Great job. You have 15 seconds more on this leg. Make sure you keep that core engaged, really nice, good form, reaching that leg out, bending forward, breathing. Good. All right, if you're ready, you can switch to that other leg. Inhale, exhale, bring that leg back. My core is engaged, squeezing those glutes and then standing back up. So nice and slow movements, doesn't have to be fast, really working on that balance, engaging the core and breathing. So a nice cadence to go into is if you inhale, as you exhale, lift that leg and then inhale, exhale, come back up and stand. And if it's really hard to continue to lift that leg, we have five more seconds. That's okay. You can always just do like a little lunge or just bend forward, lift it up just a little off the ground and then come back to standing. In three, two, one, we're gonna go back to good mornings. So our feet are shoulder width apart. My hands are on the small of my back. My pelvis is tucked in, my core is engaged, breathing in. As I exhale, coming down to waist height, and then coming back up, a nice little tushy squeeze, squeeze those glutes, <laughs> and then come back down. Good, nice and slow. There's a lot of studies about how slow, intentional movements are much better for us as opposed to hard and fast or HIIT workouts. I mean, everything serves a purpose, but there's a lot more research on how beneficial just walking is doing just walking and moving our body 15 minutes a day. Uh, 
for me, I used to be a really, you got about 10 more seconds. I will stop talking. <laughs> I'm just going to talk today. All right. In three, two, one, we are switching to our deadlift, single dead leg deadlifts. Excuse me. So I was a pretty intense athlete my entire life. And as an adult, not competing anymore, I really had to figure out in like finding joy enjoyment and movement again, but enjoyment and movement that wasn't competitive. And that was a really hard journey for me <laughs> and really only something I'm 33 now. So really only something in the last few years that I've really just found enjoyment hiking or snowshoeing or just walking and just being outside or doing things like this, like yoga or Pilates. Um, because I was a team sport person, super competitive, <laughs> but that's just not something that my body wants to do anymore or really I do. And so I think just finding things that make you feel joy or bring you community is super important and it looks different for everybody. All right. In five seconds, we're going to switch five, four, three, two, one. This is our last leg. And we're just going to do it for 30 more seconds. And then we get to transition to kind of our, I'm going to call it the mid-level, not quite sitting, but not quite standing. You're doing great. Is that core engaged? Make sure that core is engaged. When we get tired, it's really easy. I know I'm feeling my glutes right now. Three seconds, three, two, one. Good job. All right, if you wanna grab a little sip of water, you can. And I'm just gonna explain the next um, kind of flow that we're gonna go into. So we're gonna be on all fours um, for about six exercises, but we kind of rotate through. So if being on your knees hurts, please just take breaks. You can go to your hips. Um, I do try to make it so that we're not there a lot because I also have a, some knee issues. So. Um, when you're ready, we're going to go on all fours. You can also listen before we start. And what we're going to do is what it's called a bear hold. And so, um, this can be challenging. So you can do it from your knees too, but you're going to be on your all fours. So my wrists and my elbows and my shoulders are in line and I'm on my knees. Now, again, my core is engaged. I don't want my, my belly sagging too much. And I don't want my back too high. I'm going to tuck my feet under so that my feet can like push up off the ground. And a bear hold is all we're gonna do, literally is just about two inches off the ground is you're going to just push up off in your toes and lift your knees off the ground about two to three inches and just hold it. And we're just gonna hold it for five seconds. And then we're going to push all the way up into downward dog. So from here, we're gonna be in the bear hold. So right now my, I'm in all fours, my feet are tucked under. I'm gonna push up. I'm going to hold my knees up for three seconds, and then I'm going to push my butt up in the air into a downward dog. And so downward dog, my hand, my head is between my hands. My butt is in the air and it's almost like my body's making a mountain. So this is going to be a flow and it's going to really challenge us. So we're going to go from bear hold to downward dog to a plank where our, our, our arms and elbows and shoulders are straight. So we're not gonna go down in a plank to our elbows. So we have the bear hold, then we go to the plank, or sorry, we go to the downward dog. And then I'm just going to bring my butt down so that it's as level as possible, bringing my shoulders over my wrists and hold in that position so that I'm in a plank. Now, if you have to adjust your hands a little bit, that's totally fine. So what we're gonna do, is we're going to flow doing this. I'm going to hold it for three seconds each um, the first time so that we can just get used to it. And then I'll time us and you can flow as you see fit. So if you want to try it right now with me, we're on all fours. And we're going to, again, we're going to start with that bear hold. So we tuck our feet under, we just lift our knees up ever so slightly. So one, two, three, I'm gonna push my hips up into downward dog. Let my head hang down. One, two, three. And then I have to move my hands out a little bit and then I'm gonna go to plank. Core is engaged. One, two, three. 
and then slowly come back down to my knees. So that's the flow. And I'm really excited to try this today because this is a challenge for me. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. How long do we, is it just variable holding each position? Yes. Like we can, you can do it the count to three or you can do it a count of five or whatever works. Yeah. So for this, because I think it just, it varies. I'm going to do it for three seconds personally, and I'll count that, but if, and I'll just do it once and then you guys can transition on your own. So a little free flowing movement. So if you want to hold it for 10 seconds or 20 seconds, that's fine. I'm going to do this. We're going to do this twice. So two minutes total. So what I can do is I'll count it through a couple times and then I'll say, okay, it's been a minute. You can now flow through as you need um, and just take breaks as you need. So one thing I want you to remember is, or two things, make sure you're breathing, inhale, exhaling, and also make sure that your core is engaged. So are we ready? Any questions? Okay, so we're in our, on all fours, we're gonna start with that bear hold. So my feet are tucked under, inhale, exhale, lift those knees up, one, two, three, push your hips up to the sky in a downward dog, three, two, one, Good, and then transition to that plank. One, two, three, slowly come down and start again. So go ahead and flow on your own. <laughs> and if you can hold it for five, great. If you can do two seconds, one second, that's fine. And just try to find that rhythm with your breathing, inhale and exhaling. So when you're pushing up, that's a great time to exhale. Engaging that core when you're in the plank. Good. 30 more seconds. Breathing in. Exhaling. It is hard to do this and talk at the same time. <laughs> and good. This is an awesome, really uh, diverse exercise. And you guys holding it as long as you can uh, is a great way to just also increase the in increasingly challenge yourself. All right, eight more seconds. Try to get one more flow in. And three, two, one, and rest. Great job. Whew. How did that feel for everybody? <laughs> I know a lot of you guys are muted, so I'm just gonna say it was great. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take 30 seconds and then we're gonna do it again. So if this time you can go a little longer, even if you go like five seconds on one and then like two on the other. So bear holds for me are actually pretty difficult, but I can do the downward dog longer and I can do the plank longer. And so feel free to just kind of flow with what your body needs, breathing in and exhaling. All right, here we go for one minute, one minute left in three, two, one, here we go. Make sure that core is engaged, that bear hold to downward dog, and then to the plank, just flowing as you see fit, inhaling, exhaling, engaging that core. Awesome job. 30 seconds left. You're doing great. Can you challenge yourself? Breathing stretching, really a full body movement, engaging that core, 15 seconds, you got it, finish strong, breathing in, exhaling, all right, we have 10 seconds, you can do anything for 10 seconds, push through in five, four, three, two, one, awesome job. All right, let's get a sip of water. And if you'd like, um, actually what I'm gonna do to give our knees a little bit of a break is we are gonna get a sip of water and we're gonna go to our back and then we'll go back to our knees just because that was a lot of time on our knees. So while you're getting a sip of water, the next exercise is um, we're just gonna be laying down on our back and they're gonna be um, leg lifts. So there'll be some single leg lifts then butterfly <clears throat> kicks and then scissor kicks where we just hover about 
like eight to 12 inches off the ground. And I'll explain them. But with that, you can, as you're laying down, <clears throat> you can tuck your hands or your fingertips just under um, your bottom or in between your middle back and your, um, your glutes. Uh, and you also can put your hands on your stomach or on your sides. If you do tuck your hands underneath your bottom, which is totally fine, what I want you to make sure you do is that you still don't have that C curve in your back. You need to make sure that you're still engaging your core while laying on your back. So right now, what I want everyone to do is just lay down. And from that uh, position laying down is like right now, for me, I already have like a little window between my back and my bottom. And so what I have to do is consciously tilt that pelvis forward so that I'm literally pushing my back into the ground and it's almost like I'm already doing a crunch. So that's how we engage our core as we're laying down. So breathing in and exhaling again, tilting that pelvis forward so that our core is engaged. Now, the first exercise we're gonna do is single leg lifts. So we're just gonna lift while our core is engaged, one leg up to the sky and then slowly bring it back down. Now for me, so that if you have lower back issues, um, it's easy, uh, it's easier or more comfortable to like put one knee up uh, so that my foot's flat on the ground so that I don't have so much strain on that lower back. That is something you can do. So instead of having my leg out straight like a pencil, it's bent um, with my knee pointing towards the sky. And so <clears throat> we're gonna do alternating legs. We're gonna do one leg at a time. My core is engaged and I'm just bringing my leg up as high as I can to a 90 degree angle and then coming back down. If you can, don't have your heel touch the ground in between. So we're gonna do that for 30 seconds and then we'll switch legs. And you just wanna make sure you keep that core engaged. The next one is going to be butterfly kicks. And so butterfly kicks are where our feet hover about six to 12 inches over the ground. Um, again, engaging that core and they're going to Chris, I'm sorry, they're gonna go up and down. So like flutter kicks in the pool, um, like if you're doing freestyle stroke, you're just fluttering your feet. I like to point my toes just because it makes me feel like I'm a graceful dancer. I am not. Uh, <laughs> and you're just fluttering your feet up and down as your core is engaged. And then the last exercise is scissor kicks. And that's where we're literally just putting our left and right leg over each other like we're closing scissors. Um, and I like to cross over my ankles instead of just like coming together and then opening, I like to kind of try to stretch a little bit and really um, cross those feet over and under each other as I do my scissor kicks. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, so we're on our backs and um, our core is engaged. I'm gonna put one foot, uh, I'm gonna have one foot up and I'm gonna be lifting my right leg first. So it's gonna be 30 seconds right leg or whichever leg, 30 seconds the other, then we're gonna go right into butterfly kicks and then scissor kicks. And so this is gonna be like an ab burner. So feel free to take breaks if you need to. If your back starts to hurt or you start to get like you're not engaging your core anymore, put your feet down, take a 10 second break and then start again. We're just gonna do this. So we're gonna do it twice through but we're gonna have a break in between. All right, are we ready? Here we go with leg lifts, just your right leg engaging that core lifting that leg to 90 degrees, breathing in, and then exhaling. Good, 15 more seconds. So not only does this work the core, this also works strengthening your hip flexors, which if you sit too much, those are what get really weak. And so this um, really helps us build our, our back um, core and then our lower abs. All right, we're gonna switch legs in three, two, one, my core is engaged. I don't have that C curve in my back and I'm breathing, good. 15 seconds to go. And just right, this whole workout, we're really just working every part of our abs because we have abs in the side, we have them in the back, lower, upper, five seconds, three, two, one, good. Shake out those legs a little bit. We're gonna be going to butterfly kicks. My hands are on my sides. I'm gonna see how long I can do that. <laughs> Core is engaged, feet are up and flutter kicks. Here we go in three, two, one, flutter kicking away. 
And I, again, I like to point my toes. I was not a dancer, but this makes me feel like I'm a ballerina. I did a lot of like aggressive sports. <laughs> so I'm not a graceful person and you could ask anyone in the office. I like trip daily. <laughs> All right, we have 15 seconds. In five, four, three, two, one. Good, shake out those legs a little bit. Take a nice deep breath, inhale, exhale. All right, realign that core and scissor kicks in three, two, one. We're engaging our core, we're breathing. Good. Keep on going. Awesome job. 15 seconds. And five, four, three, two, one. Now, if your lower back is hurting, what we can do is we're just going to stretch out so you can grab both knees or you can grab your thighs if it's too hard to grab both knees. And you're just going to pull them to your chest and you're just going to rock back and forth. You could also do um, happy baby pose if you know that in yoga. But we're just going to kind of massage our lower back by bringing those knees to our chest. And rocking like a cradle. We are going to do that flow one more time. We're going to do it for, look at time wise. We're going to do it for, we can do it for 30 seconds each. Well, actually we're going to do it for 15 seconds each. So a little bit shorter. We'll do 20 seconds. <laughs> All right. And <laughs> let's get, I was like, I'm like, we can do 20 seconds. So we are going to start um, with your right or left leg. Core is engaged. Make sure you're keeping that core, really push that pelvis up. In three, two, one, leg lifts. I don't point my toes for this. I actually flex them. I don't really, I don't think it matters too much. Really, you're just focusing on lifting from your abs and your hip. All right. In <clears throat> five, four, three, two, one, switch legs. My core is engaged. Very nice. I'm breathing. In five, four, three, two, one. All right, situate yourself. Get ready for those butterfly kicks. In three, two, one. Butterfly kicks. My core is engaged. Good. Up and down we go. 10 seconds, and we're gonna go right into our scissor kicks, no break. So if you need to take a break, go ahead, but let's try to challenge ourselves in three, two, one, straight into those scissor kicks. Oh my gosh, my quads are burning. I have not done this in a very long time. <laughs> Keep on going, 15 seconds, breathing. Make sure that core is engaged. Five seconds, three, two, one, and down. Awesome job. Go ahead and lift those knees to your chest and just rock back and forth if you need to massage. Awesome. All right, we're gonna flip back over onto our knees and we're onto all fours, excuse me. <clears throat> And so we have uh, just two exercises for this one, but again, it's alternating. So first we have the bird dog. So right now I have my, I'm on all fours. And again, just make sure your wrists, elbows, and shoulders are all in line over each other. And my back is as flat as it can be, but I don't want my belly dropping down. I want my spine to be aligned. So just make sure again, you're tucking that belly button in so that your core is engaged. So for bird dogs, uh, what you do is it's also way back when it was also called the Jane Fonda. Um, and that's what I used, that's how I learned it. But <laughs> um, you're gonna lift your left hand out and stretch it out. And at the same time, lift your right leg out, extending both so that they're straight and then coming back down to the middle to rest them down on the ground. So, Again, for bird dog, it's alternating. So I lift my left leg, 
my left hand and my right leg. And then I bring it back down. I lift my right hand and my left leg, reaching out, stretching, squeezing, and then coming back down. Does anyone have any questions about the bird dog? A big piece of that is really squeeze everything. Just anytime you can squeeze your muscles at the top of an exercise. So when I say squeeze glutes, just squeeze your muscles. <laughs> From the bird dog, we're going to do cat cow. And you guys are going to be able to flow through cat cow how you wish for 30 seconds. But just to go over cat cow, for cow, you're going to drop your belly down. So this is where we don't engage our core. You're just dropping it down like you had udders and you want them to touch the ground. And then your head is going to come back. So like you're trying to crack a nut between your neck and your spine. And you're going to breathe in. And then you're going to exhale. So that's cow. And cat is when you push your shoulder blades up to the ceiling and you tuck your chin, breathing in and then breathing out. Now, what I like to do so that I get in a really nice flow is I, I breathe in cat. So I breathe in, my spine goes up, my chin goes in, and then I exhale to cow, drop my belly, head goes back, breathe in the cat, exhale to cow. And that's a really great breathing exercise if you guys can find that flow. Okay, so it's just these two. It's just bird dog and then cat cow. Anyone have any questions? All right, 30 seconds on the clock for bird dogs. Make sure our core is engaged and make sure you're squeezing. And then cat cow is really just about elongating our spine and just engaging those muscles. All right, in three, two, one, bird dogs, here we go. Reaching and stretching and squeezing. You can even hold it for two seconds if you want to squeeze, breathing in, breathing out. Good. Squeezing. Some people like to bring their like foot up higher to get an even more of a hamstring glute workout. That's up to you. I just go straight out personally. In five, four, three, two, one. All right. You're going to Inhale, exhale, cat, cow. I wonder how creepy it is to hear just people have my voice, my, myself just breathing in this microphone. <laughs> breathing is good. It releases all the pent up stuff in our bodies. Good. 10 more seconds of cat, cow. Then we're going to go straight back into bird dogs. In three two, one, engage your core, align your wrists, elbows, and shoulders, and reach out and extend your arm and your leg, squeezing, and then coming back to center and alternating. You're doing a great job making sure you're breathing. We're getting a great workout. I'm sweating. Hopefully you guys are. And again, oh, yeah. those slow intentional movements. <laughs> Awesome job. Just 15 more seconds of this, okay? And then we're gonna go to cat cow. In five, four, three, two, one. Awesome job. And when you're really going to cat, really try to articulate that spine, all of it, all the way from my, my tailbone to my shoulders, really push it up to the ceiling. And then when you go to cow, really just let it hang. Just let yourself relax. Breathing, inhaling, exhaling. It's so easy to not go that extra mile, but really push through your hands, your fingertips. Get that spine up to the sky. 10 more seconds. And five, four, three, two, one awesome job. You can go ahead and lay right down on your belly. <laughs> you get a little break. <laughs> we are doing good on time. Awesome. So whew, these two exercises, we're going to do a little tricep action, and then we're going to do the Superman pose, which really works our, um, our back abs. I can't think of all the anatomical names right now. So we're just going to go with it. So first thing we're going to do is the Cobra 
press. And so you're going to put your hands in line with your armpits. I almost, I almost put like my, my thumbs where my armpits are and my legs are straight out. So my, my toes aren't curled under anything. They're just straight out and relaxed. My elbows right now are like out like chicken wings. We don't want that. We want to tuck our elbows into our body. And as we inhale, we're going to exhale and push our torso up off to the ground, extending our hands. And then just kind of looking back almost like we were in um, cow pose. And you're just lifting your body using your triceps and then slowly coming back down. The big piece with Cobra press is make sure that your elbows stay tucked to your sides so you don't injure your shoulders. That's gonna really make sure that you're using your triceps. So it's just a tricep push. My legs are just hanging out on the ground. So really just using my upper body uh, in this movement. So that's the Cobra press. Does anyone have any questions? Great. So the Superman pose, I'm gonna just relax my hands out in front of me. So my, my legs are still in the same spot. And for the Superman pose for how I do it, what I like to do is um, almost like I pretend that I have, we'll say like a ball between my shoulder blades and I wanna squeeze that ball with my shoulder blades. So um, the Superman pose is my legs come up off the ground and I push my pelvis into the ground, squeezing my glutes. At the same time, my hands are lifting up off the ground and my head, and I'm gonna bring my elbows back and squeeze my shoulder blades together as my glutes are squeezing, and then I come back down. So I lift up, squeezing my shoulder blades together, squeezing my glutes, and then I slowly come back down. And that's the Superman pose. Does, that, does anyone have any questions about that? Awesome. So we are going to alternate between those two. And this is the second to last exercise. We're gonna end with glute bridges. I'm excited, be excited. So for 30 seconds, we're gonna do the Cobra press and then the Superman pose and then go back to the Cobra press. So two minutes. Here we go. Let's get our um, thumbs and our elbows pressed into our sides, thumbs near our armpits in three, two, one, press up, breathing in. And as you exhale, slowly coming down, making sure that your elbows are pushed to your sides. When you're ready, inhale, exhale, push up, reaching back, really extending your um, head back towards your glutes and then come back down. My elbows are tucked in. Awesome job. You have 15 more seconds. Inhale, exhale, push up and go ahead and flow at your own state. All right. In three, two, one, we're going to go to the Superman pose. So here we go. Lift your legs up, squeeze your glutes and pinch your shoulder blades or bring your elbows back and squeeze your shoulder blades together and come back down and up. Go ahead and flow at your own pace. Make sure you're breathing, driving those hips into the ground, squeezing your glutes. 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, back to that Cobra press up. My thumbs are in my armpits on the ground. Elbows are tucked in and press up. Making sure that my elbows are tight to my body the entire time. Breathing in, exhaling. Good, 10 more seconds. And we're gonna go right into Superman pose. In five, four, three, two, one, Superman pose, lift those legs up, squeeze the glutes, bring my shoulders black, squeeze my elbows, or <laughs> squeeze my shoulder blades together. Almost like you're trying to pop a balloon between your shoulder blades. <sighs> Drive those hips into the ground, squeeze those shoulder blades. We're breathing. 15 seconds, you're doing awesome. Five, four, three, two, one. Great job. Go ahead and get yourself a drink if you'd like one. We just have glute bridges, some glute bridge holds, and then we're gonna stretch.
it is 1250. So we're gonna go on our backs as you're getting, I'm just gonna explain while you're getting some water, feel free to stretch it out if you need to. So we're gonna go on our backs and my, my feet are flat on the ground and my, my knees are pointed towards the sky. Now, the thing with glute bridges is you don't want your feet too far away from your body. You want them pretty much as close to your butt as you can get them. My hamstrings get in the way, so they're not super close, but they're as close as I can get them. Now, with glute bridges or hip bridges, again, we want to make sure our core is engaged, so not that C curve. You want to push that pelvis up so that um, that imaginary string from your belly button to your spine, core is engaged is pulling. Now, my hands are just relaxing on my sides. And to properly do this, you're gonna inhale. And as you exhale, you're gonna push through your heels and just lift your glutes off the ground as you drive your shoulders into the floor. And then you're gonna slowly come back down. So the big part I wanna remember or remind everyone is, you're, this is all about slow movements. So I inhale, my core is engaged. As I exhale, push my glutes up, holding, squeezing my glutes together and driving my shoulder blades back into the ground, slowly coming back down. Does anyone have any questions about glute bridges or hip bridges? All right. <clears throat> so we are going to, you're going to do this on my cadence. Um, so everyone engage your core. You're going to breathe in. As you exhale, push those glutes up, squeeze your glutes, driving your shoulder blades into the ground, a little extra squeeze, slowly come back down. Good, core is engaged, inhale, exhale, push your glutes up, squeeze, come back down. Good, core is engaged, inhale, exhale, push up. Good, inhale, exhale, come down. Awesome, engage that core, inhale, exhale, squeeze up, good, inhale, exhale, come back down. <clears throat> that was five, all right. Inhale, exhale, squeeze those glutes, drive those shoulder blades into the ground, get that butt up, and exhale, slowly coming back down. That was six, two more. Inhale, exhale, squeeze those glutes up, Hold it, good, inhale, exhale, slowly come back down, that's seven. Last one, inhale, exhale, bring those glutes up, squeezing, inhale, exhale, slowly coming back down. Awesome job. All right, so this is for the fun one. We're going to do a glute bridge hold for one minute. This is our last exercise. Now, if you need to take a break, that's totally okay. But what I want you to focus on while we're holding it for a whole minute is driving through your heels, that glute up, squeezing your glutes, engaging the core, and then driving your shoulder blades into the ground. Feel free to adjust if you need to. I kind of need to like make my shoulders get closer to my knee and my, my uh, heels. All right, one minute on the clock. Here we go in three, two, one. <clears throat> Inhale, exhale, push those glutes up and hold. Awesome job. So my core is engaged. I'm, I'm pushing through my heels, squeezing my glutes together and driving my shoulder blades into the ground. And we're holding, we are at 20 seconds. You're doing great. If you need to readjust, go ahead and get slowly go down and readjust. Breathing in. Breathing out, again, squeezing those glutes, making sure your core stays engaged. Don't let that lower back sag. We're at 40 seconds. You got this 20 more seconds, driving those shoulder blades into the ground. My core is engaged. You're almost done. Keep going in 10 seconds. Here we go, fight through it. In five, four, three, two, one, slowly come back down. Awesome job. Way to go. Okay. So <clears throat> that is our kind of our workout. We're just going to go into just a little, little stretching. So while lying on our back, because we did a lot of movements that required us to kind of use our lower back today, 
<clears throat> with one leg with my foot flat on the ground, you're going to bring your right leg up and just um, place your right ankle on your left knee. And um, basically, you're just doing like a figure four stretch. So just kind of stretching that um, lower, lower um, outside hip, I guess you could say. So right now, my ankle is on the inside of my my left leg on my knee. If you want, you can lift your left knee that's holding that right leg closer to your body to get a deeper stretch. And just make sure you're inhaling and exhaling. Good. You're gonna take that right leg and you're just gonna lift it up to 90 degrees. Place both hands just behind your knee or your calf or your thigh and just pull that gently towards your face. And you can practice with flexing and pointing your toe just to see where you need a little bit more of a stretch and your calf or your hamstring. Breathing in and out. Good. Go ahead and gently put that leg down. You're gonna take your left leg, bring it up over your body to put your left ankle on your right knee, that leg, that leg that's bent and a nice figure four stretch, breathing. And again, if you want a deeper stretch, you can lift that right leg off the ground, pushing your ankle and your knee towards your body. Breathing. Good. Now go ahead and take that left leg, bring it up towards 90 degrees, take both hands and you can put them behind your knee, your calf or your thigh, pulling that leg towards your face and just point or flex your toe just to get a nice stretch. See where your body needs to move. Awesome. All right, go ahead and grab both knees. You're gonna grab both knees, bring them to your chest or grab your thighs or the back of your knees, whichever. And you're just gonna, like we did before, just rock back and forth just stretching that lower back, breathing in and breathing out. Good. All right, flip over onto your belly. <clears throat> and we are just gonna go from uh, <coughs> cobra pose to child's pose. Actually, we're just gonna go into child's pose. So child's pose, so you're gonna take your knees and Spread them out as far as you can. And your hands are gonna be stretched out in front of you. And you're just gonna push your bottom all the way back towards your heels as far as you can go, letting your belly just hang down between your legs. And if you're able to, you can rest your forehead on the mat. Breathing in and breathing out, breathing in and breathing out. Awesome job. Now we're gonna slowly stand up and we're gonna end with a forward fold. So just go ahead and slowly stand up. Very nice. And with our forward fold, we're just gonna feet our shoulder width apart. Slowly bring those hands up over your head. Good, and this time we're gonna pretend like we're diving into the ground, we're, our feet aren't gonna leave the ground. We're gonna take our hands and then dive down towards our toes. Kind of a nice fluid swift motion. Breathing in and then breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And slowly when you're ready, go ahead and come back to the standing position. <clears throat> 